I know I ain't been out here for a couple days, guys, or a few days, um, but I had some stuff going on, health issues, stuff like that. Anybody that's worried about me, I do apologize. I probably should have said, hey, I'm okay, guys, but I <coughs> just kind of forgot that. So um, I'm bad about that. I'm going to try to get better with that. So I do apologize. But back to the normal stuff, guys. We're going to uh, um, get jump right into this, okay, guys? Um, get back into stuff. But this week's going to be a little different here, okay? Um, I finally got my Zoom and everything set up to where I can have guests on my show. And that's what we're, I'm going to have a couple of interviews this week, um, tomorrow and Thursday. I'm going to give you my space weather report at the same time. Okay, so that's what's going to happen there. Um, mo both of them will most likely be live. And that way we can ask questions if, if we have them and all those kinds of things. And again, like I said, I'll give my space weather report at the same time. But on Thursday, it's going to be Rip Curl. Okay, um, you guys have heard me talk about Rip a lot. He's a prepper. Um, whether you're prepping for a snowstorm, a, a, you know, a power outage or whatever, um, or SHTF, he's going to show you what to do, how to do it, and the cheapest way to do it. And do it in a very humorous way so we can retain the information. We're entertained at the same time. And that's kind of what I try to do, but I don't, you know, the information I give you guys isn't, typically it's almost impossible to put a positive spin on it so i just try to keep it down uh, less negative as i can but with that being said um this is gonna be on thursday and hopefully it's you know hope you guys come over and check it out i'll put a community post up but please ring the bell so you guys know when this goes live um i really hope that you already do that anyway but i don't typically ask for that but in this case with the interviews and stuff please ring your bell at least for a few days um, that way you guys get the notifications, and I'll put a community post out. But tomorrow, I'm going to have somebody I talk about all the time on the show, believe it or not. <clears throat> um, I even let him have my channel for a day, but we had some internet issues that day, and it didn't work out all that great, but it worked out some. Uh, but you guys hear me talk about Mark a lot. Mark Pyre's Real Talk. Um, he's a really good friend of mine, just like Rip is. But um, I want you guys to be able to see him. That way I can't, you know... I'm just not saying his name. I believe in what everybody's doing here, and we got to help each other. But he's going to be on tomorrow, and he's going to introduce us to somebody else, too, named Wayne Doppler. Um, so I think you guys will be really interested to see who Wayne Doppler is. He does. Uh, he typically does, like, uh, regular weather, but he's starting to step out with, like, space weather and earthquakes and stuff like that. So I think you guys will really enjoy that. Mark's going to introduce us to him. And again, I will give you my space weather report, you know, at the same time. And if it's live, we'll be able to ask Mark questions. And this is where I push you guys for positive stuff, you know, because I, I'm, it, stuff I talk about is negative. But to give you a little, just tell you who Wayne is, uh, let me show you guys this real quick. Thank you, Wages World. I really appreciate you having me on to share my expertise. My name is Wayne Doppler. I am the inventor and proud patent holder of the Wayne Doppler 5000, also Guinness World Record holder, tallest man in history, 8 foot 9. And look, I have a hard time standing in frame. They need seven cameras to get me in here. But so yeah, that's who Wayne is, um, and we're going to... You know, Mark's going to introduce us to him, and um, he's got a really interesting view on a lot of space weather stuff. So, I hope you guys come check all that out. Um, with that being said, again, that's going to be tomorrow, and I'll put out community posts, so please hit your bells. That way you guys get that, get the notifications of them. But I got some stuff here I want to talk about, too, space weather, before I let you guys go on this video. Um, so, let's, uh, let's get into that. Okay, guys, let's get into the Schumann here, guys. And um, so what do we got? Um, I'm also going to try to integrate some of those transitions there. I just think it looks cool. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, but um, with the Schumann here, guys, yeah, we got a lot of background noise. Can you guys see all that, how it's kind of fuzzy and hazy? Um, we had this spike here, too. But guess what? I noticed something a little strange here. I don't, I've not heard anybody else talk about this. But do you guys remember a few, uh, it's probably been six months ago, I think, um, when I showed you a Schumann resonance uh, imaging, and it looked like three spherical balls. You guys remember that? Well, check this out. You guys see that? 
Doesn't that look very similar to that? Now, I know it's kind of, most people wouldn't even probably see that, but um, i seen it. I don't know why I see stuff like that, but I guess I do. Um, does it mean anything? I really don't know, because I don't, I never got a, you know, good, solid reason why we seen it the last time. Um, I do have some captures of that. Um, I, I didn't go back and grab them, but I, I'll show it to you guys in my next video. Uh, but I'm sure you guys can see that. I'm not sure what causes that. So if anybody has any ideas, please let me know. Um, I don't know why the Schumann would be showing spherical objects like that. I don't want to call them objects. <laughs> That's exactly not what this is. This is this you know, a computer rendition of what the Schumann is. That's really all. It's giving us a visual. But for it to show up in a shape like this is really kind of strange. And it did it before, and it was three spherical balls then, too. So I'll try to, you know, go back and check those out. But um, if anybody has any idea of what that is, please let me know. Um... Just drop it in the comments. I would encourage you guys to leave a comment too because it helps get the video out. The more comments you got, the more it pushes it. But um, just put hi, you know, kiss my butt, something in the comments, and it will, it just adds to it. So, um, yeah, so if you guys have any idea what that is, let me know, guys. So, yeah, guys, um, yeah, this is the Space Weather Prediction Center, and um, we've had a flare and got into C-class range. Um, I think it was a C-2, I believe. I can't exactly remember. Um, but regardless, that was a flare, um, so that's what we've seen there. Um, as far as geomagnetic activity, guys, they're not predicting anything for quite some time. Um, we do have some coronal holes, and I'll show them to you here in a little while. But their predictions here, even for the next three days, not much um, and I I kind of agree with this one okay um, this is something that I've been looking at the Sun I still keep even though I haven't done videos I keep I keep up with what you know is going on and what's being uh, shown on the tools and things but here is the the goes Sun image let's see if we can't get a little first look here um, here is the coronal hole, and what you're seeing there, that's normal, it's, that's, it's, it's that season, the things are, you know, I've talked about what's going on there before, um, but the coronal holes here, we are going to connect to that if we aren't already, um, it, is it going to bring us big time winds, no, I don't think so, but it could, you know, it could be a, a simple uptick, but the flare itself happened over here, this is something we're going to have to watch. So I'll show you guys that here in a second, but the, just to kind of wrap it up here on this part of it, um, Enlil, um, it does look like it probably picked up some of that and they put it into their model. I don't think it was like a very highly, at least towards Earth, eruptive towards Earth as far as plasma or a subsequent CME or something that was with it. Um, but with that flare, and, it, and I'll, show, I'll talk more about that here in just a second, but... Um, I did not. I wasn't able to see it on the this absorption prediction chart because I got here too late. Um, I think I can go back historically, but I'm not going to waste your time on that because it's not really all that impressive to look at. So yeah, so that, there's that. Now again, we'll, we'll we'll take a little bit deeper look here in just a second on some of these other things. Okay, guys, so yeah, um, this is the Discover data uh, with the solar wind and, and the other, other conditions we're going to look at, what's part of the solar wind. Um, so we got the speed. Um, the speed's hanging right around normal, guys. Yeah, it's a little high end of normal over here. Remember, three to five hundred is normal. Now, um, it was a little, it broke it up here a little bit, but not much. It is kind of tapering back down right now. So we're getting back down closer to like complete normal range. But density, normal on density is 4, and we're not seeing much more than 4 either. Um, the BZ, we're not going into the negative, so nothing's going on there. The phi angle even really hasn't changed polarity, but very 
you know very shortly here um, that's that is that's the polarity of the solar wind itself um, it, it is charged particles so it has a polarity um, we have to understand that and the temperature very much normal stuff here guys so not a whole lot you know um, as far as this goes very quiet conditions at earth right now as far as solar wind Okay, guys, um, here's the Magneto Pause models, and so what we're looking at here, not a whole lot going on at the moment. Okay, I'll just run this through real quick. I will make a couple comments here in just a second, but not much going on because we don't have solar wind. Now, what you're going to notice here is something different than what we have been seeing. Remember the white, this is just density of it, okay? So the white is lower density, and the blue is the darker, and I've explained this a lot, but... As you can tell, you know, we're in a lower dense time. And the reason why is because we haven't been getting a big, you know, we, we're not in that big solar wind stream anymore. Um, things have quieted down here at our planet, and this is really proof of it right here. This is the magnetic pressure of what we're looking at here. You know, for the past almost two weeks now, it's been almost solid red. I mean, around our planet. And I've talked about it multiple times, but see what's going on now. Things are really, really quiet. Now, with that being said, I do have something here I want to show you. Um, let me uh, pull it up here. And what, what I'm going to show you guys is this is back on the 4th. And I was going to show it to you before, but um, we, we look at things, and then we you know when we see things hit us from the backside, there's always a big question, why, what's going on? I'm just going to show you the observation, let you guys do your research on your own and, and see what's going on here. Because um, there's so many things that are, you know, that, that people talk about when it comes to this. And um, again, just research everything. That's what I would say. Uh, so when we're looking at this, what I'm going to show you, you're going to, you're going to see the backside of Earth get hit magnetically. Okay. Um, whether again whether what's causing it i'm just going to show you the observation but it when i'm going to stop it at a specific point here and show you what's what i you know what i'm seeing so um i push play there and you can see things start moving okay now did you now i'm going to walk that back a little this it's kind of hard to do with this Okay, so what you're going to see, I'm, I guess I'm just going to have to play it, I guess. I got, it, I got it on the wrong player, but you'll see it almost like a reverse arc. Okay, what does that remind me of? You know when we get hit from solar wind out here, right? You see this like ripple effect, and it kind of, on both sides, uh, around our bow shock, around our magnetosphere, right? Um, you kind of see that here. Watch what happens. Right there. You see that? So I guess I can do this. Oh, I, I actually did that. See that? Bam, bam. I forgot I did that. See that? What does that look like? Doesn't that just blow your mind? I mean, that is just like, wow. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> again and I'm saying this because you know earth is out here right and we're put you know solar winds blowing from left to right so that's showing you the direction that things are moving and this is doing exactly what it's supposed to do it's going around us in this arc but why is there one on the back side of us with the same kind of arc pushing against solar wind don't know <laughs> But that is just something that was like, whoa, what is that? So I'll play it again. See that? I mean, it, it just kind of blew my mind a little bit. Um, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen that before on this model. Um, and again, it's just an observation. I don't really 
to have a good answer on what's causing that. There's a lot of different things people talk about. So, you know, I, you can do Google searches. You can look at other people's channels or whatever. But um, this is a big subject. I guarantee you that. Promise you that. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to show you guys that because, you know, we get a lot of, lot of crazy stuff like this that I don't typically see a whole lot of. And I've never seen it actually give us almost the exact same shape that we take. Um, that's pretty visual in my opinion that something is a little different back here than what it was before. Um, that, that's at the very least, at least in my opinion, guys. Okay? Okay, guys, so I got you here at SDO, and um, the flare happens here from this sunspot. Um, it's not an official sunspot yet. Once it crests the limb of the sun here, it probably will be. Now, this is the 131 angstrom, and I'll show it to you in a couple different angstroms here in a minute. But we also had a filament release off here, and I'll show it to you while we're here. So, um, just check this out, and um, actually, I'll just do this. Let's, uh, I'll give you a really good look at this. I really want to get this in here so you guys can see it. Um, this does... Well, doesn't look like it's going to let me do that. Let me back it out. It's over here. And it's going to give us the <clears throat> classic signature of a, of a flare. It, it happens in an X pattern. Kind of. Little hash marks. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But watch what happens here. See that little flash? And I'll back it up right there. Okay. Now, it came in as a C-class flare where we're at. This is still off the, the limb of the sun. So most likely, that flare was probably a little bit stronger. Because a lot of that energy wasn't coming, the x-rays weren't able to come this direction. Okay, so... But some of it was, obviously. You can see that. And the X pattern I was talking about, it's there. It's just real hard to see right here. But um, So let me back that up a little bit more. And we'll take a look at it again. See it right there? So that, there's your flare. Now, was there a CME with it? It didn't look to, okay? Um, it didn't look like it was like a, an eruptive flare. But what I think happened here is... Watch it flare there, right there, and then the filament releases over here. All right? Now, I'm not sure if this filament's coming at us or not, but it did look like it flipped off. Now, when this flares, there's, there's a very short amount of time before this, this filament smacks off. So what I'm thinking is maybe the destabilization of this, this area over here, you know, kind of migrated this way and kind of destabilized the whole area and cause this filament to go ahead and lift off. Um, so let's just check that out. See that? It's right here. You'll see it dark on this one. I'll show it to you in a different angstrom here in a minute. That's a filament releasing, okay? Um, I know it's kind of hard to see on the 131, so let's alleviate that problem. <laughs> and let's get out of the 131. Let's go check out, well, we're talking about um, filaments, so let's, talk, let's show you the 304. The, the 304 red version typically shows us a really good uh, filament uh, visual. Now, again, there's stuff happening all over the sun still, all right? You can see all these filaments dancing around. Some of them are pretty, pretty substantial. You see this little shadow area here, here. You know, when they get right in front of us, that's or equatorial, when they're in the equatorial regions, when they flip off, they have a better chance of, you know, hitting Earth. And, it's, and also, likewise, you know, vertically, the more center we are to it, the, you know, obviously the, most, the more likely we are to get an effect from it. Notice, though, that we do have quite a few sunspots now. Uh, at least active areas. They may not be official sunspots. This one's probably most likely going to be. This one was. Um, this one may be right now. I haven't really looked, but 
<clears throat> regardless, I'm going to make this point. We're now seeing stuff in the northern and southern hemisphere at the same time. Now that's significant because it helps us understand where we're at in the sun cycle. This is a definite, definite observation that will show you that we are no longer in solar minimum. We're moving towards a more active time. Okay, um, whether it quiets back down again, who knows. But for now, um, you know, when you start seeing them in both, both hemispheres at the same time, you know that things are starting to get more active on the sun. Because typically they'll just show up in one hemisphere or the other and stay that way for a while as we creep forward. And then this is one of the markers we look for. Okay. Um, so let me, um, I'll zoom in over here so we can see this filament release. It's right here. Right there. You see that? Um, what I can do, I guess I'll just, let's just slow it down. Go back up here. See it right there? I know I just probably missed it. <laughs> so let's, let's take it back to the beginning. Let's get back up there. Watch. Right here. All right there. You see how it had an arc and then it busted in the middle? Okay. That filament lifted off. Some of that stuff left the sun. Um, I don't know how much. You know, obviously, is it coming directly at us? I don't know. Judging from the position of this and how it flicked off like it did, um, it would make sense that it could be going at an angle. It might not be coming directly at us, but it doesn't mean we're not going to get space weather from it. Okay? Um, I just don't have enough data yet to go off of um, to really look at this. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, learn a little bit more so I can do some math and things to give a better calculation on that. Um, but I'm not going to jump out here and say one or the other right now because I'm not that confident with it yet. So anyway, um, you'll be able to see the flare here. I'm going to speed things back up. Just notice all the activity, okay? Um, this thing here, we're going to have to really keep our eye on. And there went that, that filament here. You can see filaments down here dancing around. Watch it once, watch it once the time lapse uh, restarts right here. Right about. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was over here. Yeah, there it was. I was looking in the wrong spot. Sorry. But, yeah, so you guys see all that activity. But that was your flare over here. That was the filament release. Um, the flare, whatever we were going to get from the flare, we pretty much already got. It was x-rays. Not much to worry about. No radiation storm or nothing like that, I don't think. Um, but this filament, you know, and also when this thing gets closer and closer to, you know, center disk, we're going to have to watch it. Because if it stays active like it is, it's definitely cracking. And we're going to have to pay attention. That's all I'm saying. So. Okay, over here at uh, spaceweather.com, guys, um, they're talking about the same thing here. Okay. New sunspot. It was a C1 class flare. They go into a little bit more detail here um, about what's actually going on with that. Um, I don't think they've uh, talked about this filament release yet or not. But um, here is your sun and your official sunspots as of right now, 2808. This does have a number now. So we will definitely have to keep, a, keep an eye on that one. It looks pretty much, looks pretty healthy. That's what I'll say. This one will be rotating off. This one here had a number. It actually degraded and then re, you know, gained some of its characteristics back. And they gave the number back to it for a short amount of time. And then it crested off the limb, so we can't see it. Um, that was 2806 over here, I believe. Now, um, again, this is the one we're going to have to watch. Now, we can't keep our eye off of this one either until it gets all the way off. But, um, more so the filaments, guys. I mean, the filaments are really dancing around a lot. We're starting to see a lot of those. And, you know, again, just have to keep an eye on this. See if other areas pop up. Because there are other active areas. So, we'll just have to keep an eye on it, guys. Okay, guys, um, noctilucent clouds. Now, I'm probably going to stop talking about these for a few months 
um, because they're gone in the southern hemisphere. That's just what it is. Um, and we're, you know, as as the seasons progress, we'll have to start looking for these on the northern hemisphere. Um, what is a noctilucent cloud? For people that don't know, they're kind of blue metallic looking, and it's water vapor that freezes around um, meteor dust. So that's what that's what noctilucent clouds are, and they happen in the summertime of either of uh, its respective hemisphere, depending on where you're at in the world. Okay, so North and South Pole, basically. Um, you know, when we see them outside of those areas, we question why and what, what happened to cause that, that kind of thing. These things were two weeks late this year in the Southern Hemisphere. We did see stuff up in Argentina, which is typically too far north to be having these things. But um, it happened, and they got observed. So... Um, also, sometimes when we get these like uh, rocket launches and stuff, sometimes they'll, you know, they'll show up some quote unquote noctilucent clouds, uh, you know, when that happens. It's been reported before, it's been seen before. Whether or not that's exactly what's going on there, I don't know. Um, but this right here, noctilucent clouds is kind of a, a non talking point for now. And, I, and I'll kind of leave it out of my space weather report until we see them again. So, just wanted to give you guys that update. Okay, guys. Um, here's a near-Earth object report. Um, you know, today is the 9th going into the 10th, I believe. And, you know, we've got a couple here. Now, lunar distance, guys, that's the distance between us and the moon. So, and notice how when they name these uh, near-Earth objects, they put a date on them first, typically. So, you're seeing a lot of 2021. And the reason why is because they don't see them until that time. Um, and it's going to continue that way. So, you know, what I'm saying is sometimes we'll look at this one day and then it'll be different the next. you got to understand there's very few observatories out there looking for these things, which in my opinion is a mistake. There needs to be a lot more out there, um, you know, there's no way they can catch them all even if they had the whole planet blanketed with everything that's what i would say um now you know lunar distance again guys it's the distance between us and the moon so when you're talking 0.7 here on the eighth this one is one that was inside our moon distance um other ones that are outside of that is whatever you know we can talk about that but we always have to come over here and look at the side the size and the speed um, the speed matters because obviously that's how fast it's coming at you. This one here is moving at 29.9 kilometers a second. That's actually fairly fairly quick. Okay. Um, this one, and it's 43 uh, diameters big. So that's a pretty decent size one. Now that's already here and gone. Okay. Um, but as you can tell down here, they get bigger and bigger. And then, then you see this one. <laughs> okay. On March 20, 21st. A lot of people have been talking about this one. That's a big one. But it is 5.3 lunar distances away. Um, that's a pretty good distance. Now, I know a lot of us have been, um, you know, keeping our ear to the ground here, just looking at other things and, and stuff that's actually going on, like this. This is over at space.com, and it's talking about the meteor that exploded over Vermont. It was the size of a bowling ball, but it had 444 pounds of power. From TNT, you know that's that's how they gauged it. It, it. it exploded with 440 pounds of TNT power. It didn't have that. It's just what happened. And they go on to explain here how that how this all happened and why it exploded. You know the shock wave, all those kinds of things that they talk about when we're talking about these things. But this was pretty significant. Um, it wasn't nothing. Nobody like got hurt or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. It it exploded above the ground so and there's a lot of reasons why you guys can go over here and read this if you want i would if i was you there's a lot of articles on this a lot of people talking about this so that's what i would say to that now i want to bring this up too now this is back on the 8th from spaceweather.com they're talking about apophis now it flew by um it's got it already flew by us already i think but yeah was it we had our the pre flyby, um, and they seen it, okay. Um, but 
It's coming back in 2029. We know that. And this is a this is a, a fairly decent sized store, you guys. Okay. Um, this is one of those things I would keep my eye on. Um, if any of the math is off, if anything happens to this thing before it comes back around again to you know to be in our view and stuff, but we're going to be able to see this with our own eyeballs with no telescope. You're going to be able to look up in the sky and see this thing. That's how close it's going to be. All right, now I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but you guys should go over here and read this too. It's this is spaceweather.com from the eighth. All right, all you got to do is change it over here and hit view. Um, but this is something we're just we're just going to have to keep our eye on. Again, it's eight years away. I get it, but the fact of the matter is, you know, it says the asteroid will skim Earth's belt of geosynchronistic satellites. In other words, it's coming real close to our satellite line. And then any other conversation that comes with it, is there any kind of debris trail with it? Uh, how big is it? How dense is it? That kind of thing. Um, with it coming so close, because they're showing you here, the angle of which it's going to pass, and then, you know, here's, here's some of the satellites. Now, again, if the mass is off a little bit, it can change. So we know that we keep, continuously keep putting satellites up there. We know that. And all that that does is, you know, obviously it adds to the chances of something getting hit. I get, I think we all understand that. But this is a, a fairly close one, guys. We're talking 30, 31,900 kilometers away. All right, so please just kind of keep that in mind when we're talking about this. And don't freak out about it. Number one, it's, what, eight years away still? Number two, we're just going to have to do what we can to kind of keep... You know, keep our head on a swivel on this one. So. Okay, guys. Um, just a little quick update on earthquakes. Guys, you know, we had all these down here. Kemetic Islands. Um, it's from the big one the other day. Things are going to keep shaking over here. We know that because it's just historically what happens. When you get a big quake like that, especially one, you know, eight or greater, it's going to shake for quite some time, okay? Um, we know that from our own country here, right? Um, for those that listen from the United States. Shout out to my Aussies. Shout out to my people over in England, New Zealand, guys around the world, you know, you know South America, Africa. Europe. I got a lot of people all over the place, guys. Um, and I know I don't I don't know the actual conditions where they're living, but I do appreciate that they're here watching and, and all that. So shout out to everybody else and to my my peeps here in the United States. <laughs> um, but what I want to say here, guys, you know, we're seeing some fives all you know quite quite a lot of places here. Now we've been seeing this over here, okay. Um, I know that's a 5-4. It's a decent sized quake for over here. Um, I can't remember which island it is over here, but I think it's off the coast here. Um, there, there's, there was talk about, you know, if, if that was, there was an island there that like half of the mountainside was supposed to like fall off eventually. Whenever that does happen, it could actually send a tidal wave and like really wipe out our east coast. <laughs> um, I, I know I shouldn't like chuck over that. That's more of a nervous laugh, I guess. But um, I'm not exactly sure what would what that event was uh, would be called. There's some island chains. I need to research that a little bit. I don't think that is this location though. Okay, let me put that out there first and foremost. Second thing I would say here, guys, there's been quite a bit of volcanic activity also. So let's keep that in mind. All of that is seismic activity. Um, we got stuff up here happening in, you know, uh, the northern parts of the west coast around the Cascadia zone. <laughs> up here in Iceland, guys, I mean, they were talking like, what, 2,000 quakes or something like that in a very short amount of time. Um, plus, now we got volcanic action going on too around the planet. Um, I, think, I think I've seen some stuff from Sicily over in Italy area where they it was raining like this black stuff <clears throat> i mean it was crazy it was covering the ground there was nobody on the streets it was it was kind of kind of eerie looking matter of fact 
but that's what's going on with the quake situation that we haven't had a, a really big one since the one that happened down here um, let's look at all magnitudes just to see what we got as far as total overall activity now remember oh man a lot of that Alaska stuff um, if I remember right, there was a volcano or something up here, too. I, I need to go research that. Like I said, guys, I haven't felt good, and I do apologize. I've been trying to keep up with everything, but some of it I probably missed this time, and I do apologize for that. Um, but there is a lot of activity up here, I will say that. Um, not only and down here. I mean, it's quite a bit of activity. Uh, but, again, things are happening. You know, when you get an 8-1 eight, eight quake, that rings the whole planet. Um, that also points to the whole planet is probably just on a typical uptick of things that are happening. So we just got to keep an eye on it, guys. Um, there's not much more we could do with this. Um, and I would point you guys over to Ron, uh, Ron Tyler, him and Terry, um, over at Emergency Management Associates. They do shows every day, typically. Um, they also talk about preparedness stuff, too. And, um very good people know what they're talking about they can read the size mos and stuff like that <clears throat> and i appreciate that fact because i can't i can't read that that kind of thing i don't know what i'm really i mean i got a general idea but i can't do any of the stuff that they do so please go check them out over at emergency management associates um, they deserve a lot of credit over there ron and terry and everybody else over there ricky isaiah's granny er everybody over there, just great people um so yeah, so please go check them out. Now uh, don't don't forget my interviews, guys. This week tomorrow with Mark Pyers, he's going to introduce us to uh, Wayne Doppler, and I'm going to give you my space of the report at the same time, and you know, and we'll be able to ask Mark questions or whatever. Um, and then Thursday, Rip Curl is going to be on, and we're going to talk about some preparedness stuff and give you my space of the report then also. So again, guys, I do apologize for being kind of a wall for a few days. I, you know, really, I probably shouldn't even be doing this yet, but I'm, I can't just sit around. So, anyway, God bless. Yahusha saves, and you can drink this Kool-Aid. <laughs>